Hey folks, in a previous video, I talked about Ken McRoy's telling writing, which I described as being one of the best books that I've ever read about learning how to write better. Today, I'm here to talk about yet another book in the same vein, and it's called Writing Without Teachers by Peter Elbow. And as you can tell from the 25th anniversary edition blurb on the cover of the book, it's been around for a while. I was actually introduced to this book way back when I was in college in a writing course that I took then, and it's stuck with me ever since. The idea behind writing without teachers is that it's aimed both at the individual writer and at people who want to form a writing circle. And it breaks down into roughly two pieces of advice. And the first is that you want to learn how to write as uninhibitedly as possible in short bursts. And the idea is that you don't try to censor yourself. You don't try to direct what you're doing. You just try to open the tap and see what comes out. And you do that for a fixed amount of time you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you're comfortable with. And then you take what has come out from that tap and you look at it, and then you try to impose some kind of order or, or some sense or to single out individual things from it that you think are valuable and important. So the important thing, again, is to get into the habit, and I want to stress that word, of writing freely. And the other thing that you do is that once you've unlocked this freedom is that you get together with other people and you use the freedom that you've created within yourself to help others to write better too. And so the, a big part of the book is also about figuring out how to give constructive feedback to other people. So it's about unlocking the freedom to write and about doing so in a way that allows you to perform peer support. This is where the writing without teachers part comes in, the without teachers specifically. The idea that no one person in there is is commandeering the whole thing and is strong arming it and is telling everybody else what to do. Everybody has something to teach somebody else. A rank amateur may have something to teach an expert in terms of how to write uninhibitedly, and the expert may have something to give the amateur in terms of how to single out and improve the individual pieces of their work that are most worth singling out and improving. The reason I think about this book a lot with relation to science fiction and fantasy is that one of the things that science fiction and fantasy authors, especially in the, their beginning years, are most looking for is peer support. They want critique and they want constructive feedback. And they want that from other people who know the flavor of the work that they're trying to produce. Very often I see people who are who want to write science fiction and fantasy and they want to get constructive feedback and they end up getting feedback from people who aren't familiar with science fiction or fantasy or for whom it is not to their taste. And the end result is feedback that is honestly not useful. And I've long believed that one of the best ways to get feedback is to get it from people that you know and that you trust. You have some kind of rapport with them. And if that rapport is based on the fact that you both like and appreciate a lot of the same things, you're going to be able to give each other that much more knowing and trusting and supportive feedback. If I know that you have a particular point of view on something and I ask you to read it and you give me feedback that seems to indicate that it is shaped heavily by that point of view in such a way that the feedback may actually not be that useful to me, then I know that I don't have to take it as seriously as feedback from somebody else who does not have the same kind of uh, filter, uh, doesn't have the same kind of prejudices perhaps. And that doesn't mean that uh, the first person's advice is worthless. It simply means that I know what to expect from them and how to work with it. And so when you create a circle that has that mutually supportive quality, that quality of being mutually familiar, it's going to be that much easier for you to tease out what's best from each other that way. So it's about building a circle and getting critique from other people in that circle who all know the flavor of what you're doing, who have this uh, existing level of built-in trust with each other. And it's always been really difficult, I think, to get useful feedback about science fiction from people who are honestly not interested in it. And so the idea is that instead of strong arming people who are not interested in it to do it, you try to foster an atmosphere where people who are interested are able to better develop the skills to give that kind of constructive feedback. One of the other reasons I'm really fond of this book is because I think one of the most important lessons that it has to give is something that more science fiction and fantasy writers need to hear, which is that it teaches you how to listen to and develop your own voice. It's very easy to read other people's work and to assimilate that work and to work, produce work that is 
I, I, I want to say in imitation of it. And I know that a lot of times that imitation is not conscious. It's more like you're, you're, you're trying to do homage to all of the, all of the writers that shaped you. And that's not a bad thing, but it's also something that you kind of need to get out from under the shadow of. And the better you are at learning how to get out from under the shadow of your influences, the more you're going to be able to find something of your own to truly say. And so a lot of the advice in the book revolves around finding a voice, about digging into yourself, finding things to say that are truly yours, that are not just things that you've found from other books or that you're ref uh, refurbishing from, from previous writing that you've assimilated. This is a really important lesson because it means that it gives you the freedom to say the things that would otherwise be blocked because all of the other work that you're trying to do homage to is getting in the way. And again, I don't say this because I think it's a bad thing to want to do homage to the writers that you are fond of or that you feel shaped you, but it will limit you in time. And so writing without teachers has a lot of lessons for how to not be limited by that kind of thing. I'm probably going to come back to this book a lot in the future because there are so many individual lessons in it that I want to tease out over time and demonstrate how they are useful to people who want to write science fiction and fantasy specifically. But I wanted to start with a general introduction to the book because aside from telling writing, this is easily the second best book that I have about getting, getting your writing up to another level. So please do check it out, Writing Without Teachers by Peter Elbow, and it's available both digitally and in physical editions. I've got a link down in the description for where you can find it on Amazon. Give it a read. I think you'll find it tremendously useful. That's it for now. I'll see you around.